Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Professor Stephanie Burton. I'm the Vice Principal for Research and Postgraduate Education at the University of Pretoria, and I'm your Program Director for this event. Let me start by saying thank you very much to the Tux Camerata and the University of Pretoria Symphony Orchestra for those sterling performances leading into our activities this afternoon. They will be entertaining us throughout the program, and a bit later, you will also be introduced to the UP Avua, our cultural ensemble. These groups are three of our most valuable cultural assets, and we are very proud of them. We do note that since this is the university recess, they're not at full strength, but nevertheless, I'm sure you'll agree, they have given us a beautiful performance, and we would like to thank them for giving us some of their holiday time today. I'm sure you enjoyed the performance. I can tell you enjoyed the performance. So please do post uh, and share your photographs and messages with us on our social media platform using the hashtag UPVC inauguration. I'm sure we can give them another round of applause for their performances. Thank you, and please allow me now to make a few announcements before we continue with the official program. We kindly, kindly request that you either switch your cell phones onto silent or off, but not if you're going to tweet, <laughs> for the full duration of the ceremony. In the event of an emergency, should we be required to evacuate, we urge you please to remain calm and locate the closest emergency and then exit as you are asked to. Our security staff will direct you to the closest exits. The Aula Lawn, which is out that way to the north, has been identified as the emergency gathering point. The paramedics are seated in the auditorium should their services be required by anyone. The bathrooms are situated in the foyer that leads off the Aula, left and right of the exits. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, in the case of load shedding, which we are not expecting, there will be a few seconds delay in darkness, and then the generator will become operational and power will be restored. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be requested to rise in a moment when the academic procession enters the auditorium and to remain standing until you are requested by the Chancellor to take your seats again. At the end of the ceremony, you will again be requested to stand and to remain standing until the academic procession has left the auditorium. Please do note that at the conclusion of the official inauguration ceremony, everyone is, is, who is here is invited to the reception which will take place in the Rautenbach Hall directly below this auditorium. We also have a special congratulations book which is available in the foyer just outside the doors and we would request that you please do contribute by writing a short message of congratulations to our new Vice Chancellor and Principal. The book will, will be available all afternoon, so you will have plenty of time to write your message and to sign. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all received a printed program. You will notice that in the first section, that, that section is one continuum, up to the point where the Vice Chancellor and Principal has formally been inaugurated. We will not be making announcements in between the various stages, up to the point of the investiture by the registrar. And lastly, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the words of the national anthem, which will be sung at the end of the proceedings, are printed in your program. In closing this introduction, I would like to say it is an honor for me to be welcome you, welcome you here today to this inauguration and also to be greeting Professor Coupe and his family on this very important occasion. Professor Coupe, in the short time that you have been with us so far, it has been a privilege to work with you, and I am sure I speak for my colleagues on the executive and the senior management team in saying that we are looking forward not only to your inauguration today, but also to work working with you at the University of Pretoria as we go forward. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, will you kindly rise for the entrance of the academic procession?
by the powers vested in me, I declare this occasion as a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my singular honor this afternoon to welcome you. I am Lumkile Wiseman Kotlu, Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. It is my great privilege to extend a hearty welcome to all attending this inauguration of Professor Tawana Kupe, the 13th Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria. As is appropriate on such occasions, I would like to extend a particular word of welcome to the Director General of Science and Technology, Dr. Phil Mjoaha, current and former chancellors, vice chancellors and principals, chairs of council, deputy vice chancellors, vice principals and other members of the executive of and institutions of, of representing institutions of, of higher learning throughout our country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for not being able to name the universities and the vice chancellors and also chairpersons of councils and um, former vice chancellors. I just, there was just not enough time to collect all the names and sometimes people confirm and they don't turn up at the last minute, but please feel all welcome. We are re really appreciate the fact that you have taken the trouble and the time to join this, this very important event in the history of the University of Pretoria. Deans, deputy deans, heads of departments, professors and associate professors of this and other institutions, members of the University of Pretoria Student Representative Council, members of the academic and professional administration and support staff, donors, supporters, alumni and friends, members of the media, although I cannot see everybody here, but I'm told that Mrs. Mbeki is here. I really want to extend a special word of welcome to her. It's really a privilege for us to have her joining us at this very important event. Ladies and gentlemen, in such distinguished company, it is impossible for me to welcome everyone individually. So please be assured that each and every one of you here is most welcome. Thank you for making the time to share this historic moment in the university's journey with us today. Above all, it is my pleasure to welcome our most important guest this afternoon, Professor Tawana Kupe and his family and friends. I would like specifically to acknowledge Professor Kupe's mother, Mrs. Ndihila Kupe, who set him on the journey to academic success. Most welcome, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we request you now um, to take a few seconds to close your eyes and join us in silent prayer or meditation for this moment uh, to give thanks for this opportunity to inaugurate our new Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much. Today, on 23rd March 2019, this proud institution embraces the dawn of a new era in its long and distinguished history. Today, we inaugurate the 13th Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria and also achieve a momentous milestone on the institution's transformative journey as we welcome the first black African vice chancellor and principal 
to assume this position. <laughs> Professor Cooper brings with him an exciting new vision for the institution which will build on its past achievements and strive to take it to greater heights in terms of its relevance and impact in South Africa, the region, on the continent, and globally. Professor Cooper's inauguration takes place in the year of the university's 111th birthday and coincides with the launch of particular, spectacular new initiatives at the institution that promise to revolutionize academic thinking and revision the future of higher education at the university. Such initi initiatives include the Future Africa Institute and the Javet UP Arts Center, which will create new and exciting opportunities in transdisciplinary and public, private, and community partnerships. The University of Pretoria has come a long way since its humble beginnings in 1908 when it started its first classes at Kaya Rosa in Skinner Street in the Pretoria City Center as a Transvaal University College, or TEC. The acronym from which TEC is, is derived. At the time, it was a mere department of TUC, which was situated in Johannesburg. The department consisted of arts and science courses with four professors, three lecturers, and 32 students. Today, it is one of the largest universities in South Africa with a dynamic community of more than 50,000 students and approximately 6,000 staff members from diverse backgrounds and cultures showcasing South Africa to the world, and it is the intellectual home to a substantial number of countries leading researchers and teachers, and the new and exciting initiatives referred to above will continue to grow UP's abilities to harness the best minds in all disciplines to position the institution, not only to continue to be one of the largest producers of research in the country, but to expand its impact and transform the lives of the people and communities in which it operates and beyond. Over the course of its existence and through different phases of political power and social change, the University of Pretoria has remained resilient, embracing change and adapting to social needs and demands. It has been unwavering in its commitment to academic quality and is recognized amongst the top 2% of the universities worldwide. The university's vision has always been forward thinking and uncompromising in its commitment to providing the best possible education to our students, positioning them to do great things in our society. We are continuously transforming the corporate and research landscape through innovative thinking and the high caliber of our graduates. More than a quarter of a million alumni have, been, have passed through the doors. Many have already become leaders in their fields, both locally and internationally, whilst others are firmly set on the path to success. Under his leadership, the university will continue to work towards a more equal and prosperous society and to address the global challenges we face, including those related to poverty, inequality, climate and environmental degradation, prosperity and peace and justice. Thank you again for sharing this occasion on which we celebrate and support Professor Tawane Kupe and his team and his team as they build 
and write this new important chapter in the history of the University of Pretoria. Before I take my seat, let me also offer my sincere thanks to colleagues from within as well as without the university who will be participating in the ceremony today. Thank you to those who will add glamour to this occasion. I think you have heard a little bit of that already. These include the University of Pretoria Symphonic Choir, Symphonic Orchestra, its conductor, Gaben Roden and his musicians, University of Pretoria Camerata Choir, conductor, Dr. Michael Barrett, and Camerata Choir members, and the University of Pretoria's Ovua Cultural Assembly, conductor Mkolisi Duda and Avua choir members. Finally, I would like to thank the participants in today's program as well as members of staff from various professional support services departments and students who have been involved in the arrangements today and the diverse group of individuals and companies that contributed in various ways to making today a memorable occasion. I was waiting for the choir to sing so that you, 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 we clap to them. But they're about to start. Sorry, they've taken some time to come forward.
Now it's my pleasure to kindly request the Chairman of the University Council, Ms. Futim Toba, to accompany Professor Tawana Kupe to the stage. Thank you very much. I now request the Chairperson of Council, Ms. Futim Toba, to introduce Professor Tawana Kupe to the congregation. Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to introduce to you and the congregation, Professor Tawana Kupe. Professor Tawana Kupe was appointed Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria in 2018 with his duties commencing on 14 January 2019. Prior to his appointment as Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Kupe served as the Vice Principal in the, of the University of Witwatersrand, VETS, responsible for the daily running of the university and the coordination of operations across all executive portfolios. Prior to this appointment, 
he held the rotating vice principal post for one year and also served as the deputy vice chancellor for advancement, human resources, and transformation. Between 2013 and 2019, he was deputy vice chancellor for finance and operations. Professor Cooper served as the executive dean of VETS Faculty of Humanities for six years, between January 2007 and December 2012. After serving as the head of the then VET School of Literature and Language Studies and the founding head of the Media Studies Department. Prior to joining VETS, Professor Coupe lectured at Rhodes University between 1999 and 2001 and briefly acted as the head of Department of Journalism and Media Studies. He joined Rhodes from the University of Zimbabwe, where he acted in various academic capacities from 1988, including as chairperson of the Department of English, Media and Communication Studies. Professor Coupe holds a BA honors degree and a, a master's in English from the University of Zimbabwe, as well as a doctor of philosophy in media studies from the University of Oslo in Norway. Professor Coupe has a notable publication record, having authored several journal articles, books, and book chapters in his main disciplines media study and journalism. He edited a seminal book, Broadcasting Policy and Regulation in Africa, with two other Vets University academics, Eric Wobi and Shirin Hassim. Edited, Go Home or Die Here. Over the years, Professor Cooper has played a key role in establishment of select new innovatives at Vets. Most recently, he was the founding director of Africa Center for Studies of the United States, a multidisciplinary center focusing on critically analyzing the U.S. as a nation and society. The center has attracted academic and funding interest from leading U.S. university, foundations, and private corporations, and from WITS and across the African continent. The other two new initiatives of notes are the VETS and, um, Arts and Literature Experience Way and the introduction of a fully fledged media studies program. Whale was an interesting platform that showcased VETS unique achievement primarily in the creative arts and literature across a range of disciplines in the humanities. He took a leading role in developing media studies as a major in the BA degree at VETS and is also the founding member of Media Studies Department of VETS University, now one of the largest departments in the Faculty of Humanities. Professor Cooper is an active member of several civil society organizations, including Amapungane Center for Investigating journalism, and is a chairman of a board of media monitoring Africa from 2005 to date. He is the inaugural convener of judges for the Discovery Health Journalism Award. He also serves on the board of a major private company and is a member of the International Association of Media and Communication Research. Professor Coupe is a popular invited speaker academic expert, a regular commentator on issues of media performance on radio, television, and the print media in South Africa for local and international media. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Council, it is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome Professor Coupe to our own, the University of Pretoria.
Now we come to the reason we are here. It is my pleasure to call on the register, registrar, Professor Carolyn Nicholson, to perform the investiture. Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare that Professor Tawane Kupe has been elected, appointed, and inaugurated as the 13th Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria in accordance with the provisions of its statutes, its act and its statutes. It's my pleasure to congratulate
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor and privilege to call on the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, Professor Tawana Kope, to address the congregation. Professor. Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. The Chancellor has performed the protocol options and has now asked me to give my address. When the history of South Africa and Africa's development is written, the name of the University of Pretoria will feature prominently as one of the key institutions that made a major contribution to its prosperity when, where one and all can develop their full potential. This university, will through excellence in knowledge creation, impactful and relevant research, high quality academic programs, innovative teaching and learning, social responsiveness and engagement, make a decisive difference to transforming Africa's futures. Today, South Africa and Africa urgently need in every sector, good leaders who have wisdom and foresight, well-educated, well-skilled and rounded citizens, and strong institutions that can anchor sustainable democratic futures, inclusive economic development, and social progress. Among the institutions Africa needs are high quality universities that are locally responsive, demonstrate contextual relevance, and are comparable to the best globally. Universities have a critical role to play in achieving sustained, sustainable, and inclusive development. They must embrace this role without equivocation. Africa is rich in natural resources, has a growing and youthful population, but is yet to achieve inclusive and sustainable development. To address this paradoxical situation requires scale and critical mass of and in its knowledge institutions. To be able to play their role effectively in Africa's futures, Universities must enjoy academic freedom and institutional autonomy. Equally as institutions, universities must be well governed, effectively and efficiently managed, and be well resourced to deliver on their mandate. They must also embrace sustainability in everything that they do. It is true that like many institutions in this society, before the democratic breakthrough of 1994, the University of Pretoria was part and parcel of the institutions that supported colonialism and apartheid. It would be disingenuous for me not to say so today, and disrespect for all of the people who made sacrifices to achieve dem the democracy we enjoy today. In recognition of this historical fact and its legacies, the Transformation Committee of the University of Pretoria made the following statement in 2017. I quote, Many South Africans were exclude, excluded from obtaining an education and working here. We acknowledge the university's active role in the production and maintenance of systems of colonialism and apartheid. This imperfect history, coupled with the university's strong tradition of striving for change, underpins our deep desire to move to a just and equitable future, close quote. Since 1994, Investor Pretoria has made some strides in addressing this legacy by making a significant contribution to the, to the creation of a new society. The Center for Human Rights made a major contribution to the drafting of our new constitution that is globally acclaimed, signed into law in 1996. The center also runs five much softer after prestigious human rights master's programs for students from across our continent, including in South Africa. One such program, the Masters in Human Rights and Democratization in Africa, has been offered for the last 20 years. In 1976, the apartheid regime shot down children in cold blood during the Soweto uprising. Today, the University of Pretoria runs an internationally acclaimed children's law center focused on the rights of children in a law faculty that is in the top 100 in some of the world university subject rankings. The university is at the forefront of the promotion of human rights 
to achieve a just and democratic society and is doing much more. Going forward in this transformative mode, UP will focus on providing access to its high quality education to as many South Africans and Africans as is possible. The universe quality matters to the project of African futures. Quality is critical to making a decisive difference. Africans deserve and must get quality. We are neither second-rate people nor children of a lesser God. The University of Pretoria aspires to and will strive to breathe, live, and demonstrate quality in everything it does. It will do so to create a new reality and a narrative about our continent as a place of quality, excellence, and achievement and prosperity. UP is known for and enjoys a high reputation for the quality of both its professional and research-oriented academic programs. As a result, its graduates are able to enter and enjoy success in the careers they choose. 93% of our students gain employment six months after graduating or continue with their, own, their, their, their postgraduate education while working to make this figure around 100%. UP is going to work on further deepening this quality in, in a number of ways. One of the ways in which we're doing so is improving the academic qualifications of our staff. And these qualifications, as we stand and sit here today, 66% of our staff have PhDs. We compare favorably to our local and global peers. An increase in the proportion of staff with PhDs means we can increase our postgraduate supervision. Also means we can have the capacity now to do the kinds of complex research, knowledge production, and teaching necessary to transform our continent and its circumstances. As part of that transformation, the University of Pretoria is part of a trend on the continent where, through research and teaching programs, there is a new exploration of intellectual ideas that recognize that intellectual ideas are not the exclusive preserve and a monopoly of the imperial uh, centers of the world, that ideas and knowledge and education can emanate and have the same effect in, in, in any part of the world. As part of this trend, as the Chancellor said, you will find that at UP, increasingly across many disciplines at UP, we are taking a multi-inter and transdisciplinary approaches to knowledge creation. There's an emerging consciousness about the limitations of single disciplines in addressing the complexities of our continent. So increasingly, what I sense in the last two months that I've been in the institution, that my colleagues are searching, grappling, and groping for new paradigms of understanding our con continent and understanding the world. And out of that, they're beginning to create new ways of learning and new ways of understanding. One should not talk deeply about a renaissance, but it appears at the University of Pretoria, and there is a, new, a horizon, a new renaissance on the horizon. In the context of a renaissance in thinking or rethinking our intellectual directions and beacons, we at UP will continuously reform and transform our curriculum. Pursuant to this goal, UP has an institution-wide curriculum renewal and decolonization strategy and program. The content of our curriculum is going to change, is changing and is going to change further in the following ways. To reflect an innovative engagement with the local, the continental and global in ways that will enable our graduates to be contextually grounded within our locality in South Africa and the continent, yet demonstrate global awareness. Curriculum transformation will in, part, in large part be driven by a decolonizing imperative which says Knowledge is produced at multiple points globally, not just the centers of imperial power. In some cases, this decolonizing imperative will include displacing the hegemony or dominance of imperial narratives of human history and civilization by contextualizing all forms of knowledge. In place of the dominant and colonial imperial narratives, we will place at the center of the curriculum the diversity of human histories and narratives. And in that diversity, the voices, the achievements, and the civilizations created by Africans will have a place.
The opportunity to provide access for individuals with potential for their lives to be transformed by education is of critical importance in our continent. It is a truth universally acknowledged that education provides the means for individuals to escape poverty and enable so social mobility. In our continent, where community and family is important, it is not only the lives of the individual that changes, but the lives of the extended family as well. In turn, educated individuals form the skilled room and resource base necessary to create a prosperous, a prosperous and progressive society. Providing access to education to the largest possible number of people enables a society to address poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We must widen access and expand higher education, the higher education system in South Africa and Africa. This is not a matter of choice. There is a pent-up demand for higher education on our continent. We need to increase the proportion of people who receive high-quality education necessary to change the futures of our continent. Only when a large proportion of, of people in our continent are highly educated will we be able to achieve global be able to achieve global competitiveness. We must address the structural and financial issues that impede access to and expansion of higher education as a matter of urgency. We must not make excuses because that is to quote under development. In the case of UP, in this regard, we've done the following to expand access and will continue to do so. UP is the largest a contact and residential university in South Africa. In just the last three months, we admitted 10,000 new, just over 10,000 new students, and our total enrollment is 55,000. By 2025, the university intends to reach enrollment of 75,000, with 30% of enrollments in postgraduate programs. This is not to play a numbers game. It is what the continent needs here and now. This is actually modest growth. growth. Reaching 75,000 is actually modest growth. So what UP intends to do, we will soon be entering a period of strategic planning to improve staff-student ratios and fund increased enrollments beyond the modest growth that I've just spoken about without compromising on quality. At UP, we believe also that it is not enough to admit students to the university and then they fail and do not complete their degrees. Pursuant to the goal of ensuring that we provide access as well as success, we have devised a program called Fly at UP. Fly stands for the finish line is yours. This program is a partnership between the university and its academics and the students where the pact or the agreement or the contract is that the university will give a high quality education, academics will assist, and they will use new technologies to put teaching aids, notes, things that access students online so students can access them. In turn, students will own their own studies and use their best abilities to complete their degrees in minimum time. UP believes that such nurturing, supportive, and nudging campaigns will enable students to succeed and become productive members of society. We at UP also uh, have noted that there is a gap in what we do. We support a lot of students that might be struggling or coping. We are now crafting a comprehensive program to support and nurture all high-performing students to sustain, deepen, and improve on their achievements. Through this program, UP aims to be the first choice for top achievers in school living exams and to become the natural home of talented students at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. This program would be an investment in excellence, something that should be ordinary in your university. After all, higher education is about higher achievement. We believe that a distinct, mainstreamed, visible program we have multiple effects, including motivating all students to become high achievers. At the core of the University of Pretoria's teaching and learning philosophy is the belief in a student-centered pedagogical approach which enables active learning. We value the central role of the teacher as the guide, the shepherd, 
the nurturer and the one who stimulates the intellects of the students. We believe the teacher must also mold students into rounded, active, participating citizens who can shape the futures of a society. UP has a long history of adopting technologies in teaching. We've been at the forefront of hybrid or blended learning approaches. This is where we use both face-to-face -face teaching, but also use the new technologies and other traditional technologies for people to learn in their own time, in their own space, including in distance education. The new digital technologies, especially their interactive capacities, present an opportunity for further innovation by academics and students in the teaching and learning process. The current generation of students are technology savvy digital natives, so they will take this like fish to water. We believe we will make progress in course pass rates and graduation rates through innovative teaching. We'll continue to make the process of learning empowering so that students develop the autonomy and independence that makes them able to make intelligent, independent, informed decisions, which is an important attribute, attribute that prepares them for the world of work. Speaking of the attributes uh, of, of a graduate, at UP we have a very, very clear uh, view of what our students should come out like. Through high quality teaching, inquiry led and innovative participatory learning that we, we offer our students, we want our students to attain critical thinking and analytical skills, high level research and writing skills, adaptability to change, resilience, creativity, and the ability to acquire habits and a culture conducive to life, life, lifelong learning. And one of those habits includes a love for reading. In the current context, which can be called the age of data, we teach our students how to hang in and critically analyze diverse, large data sets of, for research and informed decision making in any context. Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, UP prides itself in being one of the leading research intensive universities in South Africa and Africa. The University of Pretoria produces high quality, cutting edge research that is transformative, impactful, and relevant to creating African futures. We do measure up to our strip line research that matters. We have a rising international profile evidenced by the fact, as the Chancellor mentioned, that we are in the top 2% of universities in the world, according to some rankings, and by the growing number of areas in which we have attained global excellence. 35 UP researchers are in the top 1%, according to the Web of Science Index as of 2019. Using the data verified by the Department of Higher Education and Training, we are one of the largest producers of research, uni of research units of research units of all universities, especially if you look at the 2017 data. We are one of the largest, if not the largest producer of doctoral and master's degree graduates. We host at present 235 postdoctoral fellows and we're currently in a process to increase that to 500 postdoctoral fellows in the shortest possible time. We have 15 A-rated scholars and at 435, we have the largest proportion of rated researchers in South Africa. UP <laughs> has made major research breakthroughs in a number of areas that not only demonstrate the quality of our research and the caliber of our academics, but also the kind of research that transforms the lives of our people. I could use this whole speech to talk about all of those researchers and academics that have made breakthroughs. But allow me today uh, to say to you, in this hall, there are many such researchers. And among them, the person most of us have heard of in the last two weeks, Professor Mashudu Shifularo, who through using 3D technology, has enabled the person to regain his hearing capacity. He tells me, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and this will be true of most of our researchers. In the QS rankings of 2018, we were ranked in the top 200 universities globally in five areas, agriculture and forestry, archaeology, architecture and the built environment, law, theology, divinity and religious studies. In other rankings, we ranked highly and have recognized strengths in food security and biotechnology, as well as law, engineering, accounting, the arts, humanities and social sciences, 
as well as the biological and life sciences. Our business school Gibbs is ranked number one on the continent in some rankings. We will put in place strategies to take our research performance to the next level by sustaining the high quality research we currently do, improving the quality of research in more areas, and supporting new emerging areas. Four things are core to the strategy we are going to pursue going forward. Innovative research ideas, attracting, retaining, and keeping, and, and retaining leading, emerging, and a new generation of researchers. Partnerships and collaborations across the continent and the world, and world-class infrastructure. UP already enjoys infrastructure that is comparable to some of our peers, but we believe that we need to attain the status of world-class infrastructure. Our official research directions lie in pursuing more inter, multi, and transdisciplinary research that solves Africa's real challenges. Collaborations with our partners across the world will focus on African joint research on African issues, co-authorship, and staff student exchange, exchanges. We'll make strategic appointments to increase the proportion of distinguished international academics, recruit more postgraduate students, and increase postdoctoral fellows. These strategies will increase high quality research output and nurture the next generation of researchers. We'll be raising resources to get world-class infrastructure to enable us to do the kinds of research that our peers from the industrialized countries of the North take for granted. In this, we'll partner with our alumni, philanthropic organizations, wealthy individuals, and the broader UP community. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chancellor, there are three examples, two of which you mentioned in your speech, uh, Mr. Chancellor, that demonstrate UP's capacity to take research to the level, next level, to be serious about solving South, Af South Africa and Africa's complex and sometimes intractable challenges. I will mention these three examples today, but in doing so, am I believing out many other research programs and, pro uh, and, and programs that this university undertakes. I only mention them as the Chancellor did because they are very recent or there are very recent uh, developments in them. These three uh, developments, uh, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen and, and Mr. Chancellor, aim to achieve the critical mass that is needed to pursue knowledge necessary for sustainable development in Africa. It is well worth noting at this point that UP hosts the national hub for the UN's sustainable development goals, central to the approach that these new programs, entities, or structures, if you like, is team-based research, solutions-oriented transdisciplinary endeavors. These entities, as the Chancellor said, are the future Africa Institute and campus. The Javed UP Art Center the Engineering 4.0 facility, and the Mamelodi Collaborative based at our Mamelodi campus, what I call the social innovation space. Characteristic of these initiatives is the following. The university on its own or with partners has invested multi-million uh, rands. I'll begin with the Future Africa Institute, which we are going to launch on Friday, 29 March next week. As we sit here in this hall, there's a large group of people meeting at Future Africa talking about science and the role of science and innovation in development this very morning. Our, master, uh, our, our, our director of the program this afternoon started off this morning welcoming those people and entering a discussion with them. So Future Africa Institute is not just an institute. It is also a campus. For those who know the Investor Pretoria, it is la as large, if not larger, than Gibbs, our business school. So it is physical infrastructure, which includes the following. A conference center, a accommodation for 300 people, a dining hall, wonderful gardens where you can grow vegetables and also do research on those vegetables. <laughs> and many of those vegetables and plants have been gathered from, our, from the rest of our continent. This is, I think, a first on the continent. But also, it is the, 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 the point really is not that it is a first. The point is that it is what the continent requires to address the complex and large programs on a scale that will make a decisive difference. It will be a space for collaborative knowledge creation and research that matters to solving complex challenges that Africa faces. 
undertaken by multidisciplinary teams from across UP, the continent, and our research partners globally. In this space, the teams will co collaborate, develop networking and research leadership skills, as is happening right now, learn to communicate research to multiple publics, and how to raise resources for research from multiple sources, governments and multilateral institutions, business and the private sector, donors, civil society and international partners will, make, will constitute part of these teams uh, in an attempt to co-create knowledge that can influence policies and decision making for Africa's development. In this room, uh, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, we have 12 early career researchers coordinated by Dr. Noctula Vilakas, working, living, learning, networking, and doing research together from eight African countries, including South Africa. So it's not just an idea. It is happening on the ground as we speak. The next, Ms. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, is the Java UP Art Center, which is the result of a collaboration between Mr. Michael Javits Foundation, other donors, and the university to advance interdisciplinary knowledge of the arts, art history, art education, conservation, and heritage uh, presentation. It is an iconic structure. It is a bridge that crosses Lino Road into our other campus. At night, it is like a piece of art in its own right. And again, a multi-million rand investment by the university and its partners. It has also enabled us to create what we call an art precinct of the University of Pretoria. So it's a museum for art exhibition for art lovers, but it's much more. It's a cultural artifact in and of itself, located, as I say, in a space where we teach music. You heard the wonderful music just now. We teach the visual arts. You show visual images here. Did you see those robotic hands that were <laughs> playing? Theater and performance, architecture and design. Performances of different kinds, like the ones you saw today, can be held in the center. The creation of the art center, therefore, has, create, has enabled us to create, if you like, an art precinct or an art campus on the premises of the University of Pretoria. But here is the interesting part of it. This art precinct, because of the Java UP art center, now allows the public to enter the art center and, in a sense, to enter the university. So what we have done is to break the boundaries between the academy or the place of the people with the funny heads with the rest of the public. And in that way, democratize knowledge. The center will represent African creativity ingenu and ingenuity at its best, and it's a contribution to the human endeavors that stimulate the mind to imagine a better world than we currently living. Nothing, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, feeds democratic instincts like artistic, the artistic imagination. The third, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, is something we call engineering 4.0 facility. This is where UP is decisively entering or participating in what is called the fourth industrial revolution. This facility, which is physical buildings, laboratories, and other, located near, near future Africa, is another multi-million rand investment where we're still raising money and we hope to attract partners from the private sector, governments, and other organizations. The idea here, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, is that the integrated laboratory and live traffic facility will enable the Faculty School of Engineering to combine its capacity in road engineering, sensor technology, and data science to further the goal of intelligent transportation systems where more economical solutions are provided for the provision, operation, and maintenance of transport uh, infrastructure. It is where we are experimenting and, dis and designing what is called smart transportation systems and smart cities. In these facilities, we're also aiming to test what are called autonomous vehicles or driverless vehicles. This facility is also possible because of a partnership with the uh, states road agency, Sandral, which is interested, of course, in critical issues of transport development, which is key to economic development on our continent. Our continent is disjointed, even though it is one geographical mass, because we do not have the cost-effective, modernized, 
technology-driven transport systems that could link it up and create and realize a large market. The fourth, Ms. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, is, look, is a project located at one of our campuses, which is called the Mamelodi Campus. Yes, the Mamelodi Campus is not a place this side of town we've just called Mamelodi. It is in Mamelodi Township. So we have a presence in one of those geographical areas that were created in the apartheid era, but we worked there in order to do a number of things. In this campus, in the township of Mamelodi, a group of academics with dif from different disciplines work in concert led by the dean, Professor Ntaviseng Ogude, who is one of our best administrators and academics. While it is not new, innovative developments are unfolding in this space all the time. The Mamelodi Social Innovation Space, as I prefer to call it, enables access for students who do not initially gain entry into the university. In other words, it is those students who fail to get what we call the points to enter into the university. What you could do with them is say, tough luck, you can go. You, we can't do anything for you. What we do at the Mamelodi campus is to actually recognize their potential and give them supportive programs to the extent that they then gain entry into the university's programs. It offers enriching programs and library information space also for learners from select schools in Mamelodi. It also offers veterinary clinical services for the community. All of you who might have grown up in a township know that we didn't bother take our dogs and kids to the clinic. But in Mamelodi, through our facility, the community takes their gay dogs and kids to a veterinary facility. At the same, in Mame, at our Mamelodi campus, we're also doing something innovative. We have an innovative architecture and urbanism program that seeks to reimagine spaces planned through an apartheid logic that can be transformed to create the best environment for living, recreation, and leisure. We seek to ensure academic excellence saves a purposefulness that sustains humanity and provides hope. At the Mamelodi uh, campus, we've gone further. The situation of townships or areas where there's low economic development, overcrowding, and lack of recreational and other facilities is not unique to South Africa. You even find the developed countries like the United States. So we have forged a partnership and collaboration with Rutgers University in Newark in a community which is depressed and where African Americans live. And with the support from the Kresge Foundation in the US, we are trying to co-create knowledge that can provide imaginative and innovative solutions to student performance one, but also to rethinking uh, how one restructures the way people live and learn in such places. African challenges, after all, have resonance in social contexts similar to ours. What better do than to collaborate uh, with our comrades in arms in the United States? You all by now have heard, and perhaps are even tired, of the talk of the fourth industrial revolution. Some wonder when this is coming and whether it is coming. Some are frightened because they understand it will take their jobs. We at UP are quiet revolutionaries of the fourth industrial revolution. Universities should lead in conducting the inter- and transdisciplinary research which will guide Africa's ability to adopt, adapt, and deploy new technologies, platforms, and applications effectively for sustainable and inclusive development. At UP, we are scaling up on this kind of creating knowledge and research, as well as teaching, training, and retraining for the new world of work that is eminent because of the fourth industrial revolution or that is actually happening in some sectors, for example, in banking. In a growing number of courses, we use artificial intelligence and, and bots for teaching. We use immersive technologies and applications to teach in mining engineering. Three weeks ago, without leaving this campus, I walked in a mine in our engineering tool building, which is the building opposite this. I was working in a mine together with the dean, but I did not leave the campus. <laughs> Thanks to artificial intelligence. We have research chairs in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Our library will soon deploy robots for some of their services. My joke is our librarian is called Robert. Soon you might meet a robot called Robert asking, for, asking you which book you want. 
This is part of our curriculum transformation, which is an attempt to ensure that our curriculum is responsive to our local context, our continent, and the globe, but also moves in with changes in technology, but also prepares our students for the world of work and also for those who choose to do for a career pursuing entrepreneurial activities and innovation. Mr. Chancellor, you, I did allude, and I think you did also allude, that the university values transformation and will intensify its transformation agenda. It is important for the university to do so, because if the university does not diversify and transform, it will lose the credibility it needs to persuade our country and our continent that we need to transform everything from the way in which we organize our societies to the way in which we organize our economies and to the way in which we actually, in a sense, engage in our politics if we are to achieve prosperity. Mr. Of, the investor of Pretoria, therefore, is actively transforming its demographic profile, making sure that its programs, its ac academic programs are improved, changing the way in which we actually teach, changing the way in which students actually learn, and also creating interesting collaborations. We also go further. At least 23,000 students at UP are engaged in community projects or volunteering. That is nearly about half, half. We intend to scale this up. UP is the only African university that is part of the new University Social Responsibility Network, an international group of 15 top universities in the world. And in relation to how the university looks like demographically, the majority of our students at UP are now black including in the residencies and in postgraduate studies. And even more importantly, the majority of our 55% of all our students are women. And no gender equality is very critical to the development of this continent. Transformation of the academic staff and senior management has been slower. Strategies to quicken diversification are in place. They include an enabling, enabling programs, affirmative action, tailored support for career development and training. At UP, we're also placing energy into programs that disrupt the legacies of exclusion and discrimination. We want to ensure that we maintain a university where we address all forms of dis discrimination, harm and, and prejudice, including racism, sexism, all forms of gender-based harm and violence, religious intolerance, homophobia, and xenophobia. Our institution going forward will be celebrating all forms of diversity, and including the diversity that comes with being an African university that is firmly rooted and responsive to its South African locality. To achieve genuine inclusivity, UP is setting for itself the very difficult but necessary task to co-create new institutional cultures in the context of diversity. Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, transformation in our current context has to address the financial barriers that still, despite recent progress, prevent access to high quality education for missing middle students and also result in situations where some of our students go hungry and do not have accommodation. This has to be part of uh, the challenge of a university. And at UP, we intend to address and are addressing all of these issues. The divisions that arose between students and university management in 2015-2016 in the fees must fall context were unfortunate and most regrettable. A perpetuation of the animosity and acrimony and hatred by any means is not, the best, is not in the best interest of Africa's knowledge agenda. Each institution, including ours, must find, through critical reflection, ways of charting new forms of engagement on difficult issues. A GP will seek to address these issues, and we're going to address these issues the following way. Because we believe financial need should not be a barrier to the academically gifted, we'll create a sustainable student fund for student needs. A, as a priority, and we'll do this by partnering with our alumni, our own students as well, and partnering with those who believe that education makes a difference. As I stand here today, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, 14 of our students and a pastor, a, a Mr. Ladman, who is a congregation around our university, 
are working from Cape Town on a campaign called A Talk for Success. The idea is that for the whole journey from Cape Town to Pretoria, if you donate 40 rand per student, we can raise a few millions to give access to our students. The point though here is that the partnership, <laughs> we're going to adopt those strategies that are a partnership between the students, the university, and the broader community and the nation in South Africa to address financial need for our students. We also therefore need to actively pursue a transformative social agenda that strengthens the influence of the university as an agent of and an advocate for social change. We believe at the University of Pretoria finally that our students should not only be well educated because they pass their examinations and get their degrees. They also need to have self-awareness and social awareness to be able to give as they are given, to be able to engage with communities and assist in our communities. So they emerge with a rich student life that develops leadership abilities, social responsibility, readiness for the world of work, and the ability to operate in diverse contexts, both locally and globally. The university, therefore, will encourage activities that build active citizenship. For example, participation in clubs and societies, participation in professional associations and networks, pursuing hobbies, giving to charity. We will discourage ethnic, narrow political and exclusively race-based associations. We also, Mr. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, aim to ensure we are the sporting powerhouse of South Africa. <laughs> As I stand here, it is true that in the last two years, the University of Pretoria has been at the top of the, uh, of the university varsity ra uh, rankings, uh, and that we are winning many of our matches. Uh, on a weekly basis. The university seeks to graduate students who are well-rounded by promoting sport as an integral element of intellectual, physical, and mental well-being. To realize the ambition to be a sporting house on the continent, the university will sustain its high-performance sports facilities and develop world-class sports infrastructure. And working with our partners and our supporters, seek to access the professional services of coaches from within the continent, within South Africa, and even abroad to coach our teams. We will intensify and refine programs to identify school learners from an early age who can be admitted to our own tax sport high school, which is a high school, which is a normal teaching school, but also admit students with high sporting potential who then be also become university students. School is doing very well. 100% of our students achieve matric exemption and 80% of an uh, and role at UP. We also cannot do all of these things, Ms. Chancellor and ladies and gentlemen, if our university is not financially healthy. We will therefore be pursuing strategies to craft an advancement strategy focused on fundraising and friend raising for infrastructure for teaching and research, infrastructure for learning, and funds for academic and student talent and innovative research programs from our alumni, foundations and trusts, corporations, private companies, philanthropists, and private individuals. We we'll also redouble our efforts to ensure that the research that we produce can be turned into commercial uh, enterprises and also to sell our short courses to the general public to educate and upskill them, leveraging our locational advantage. But one of the most fortunate universities in terms of location we are located in Hauteng, the richest province in South Africa, in the capital, Pretoria, the administrative center. Our business school is in Johannesburg, the commercial, cultural, and industrial capital of South Africa. And we're in South Africa, one of the most developed countries on the continent and on the route to the rest of the continent. Using this locational advantage, we want to be an engine of sustained economic development on our continent. Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, all of these things cannot happen if the university does not value all of its staff. The University of Pretoria will achieve its vision to be a transformative agent of Africa's futures by valuing all of its staff members, a gardener, a security guard, a secretary, and a cleaner at UP. Make a contribution to the academic project. The lady who makes tea is helping the professor to be a top professor. They are not just making tea.
We will invest in their value through career development programs, sustainable remuneration practices, harmonious labor relations, health and wellness programs, and promoting collegiality, empathy, and humaneness. Finally, Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, my vision for the University of Pretoria is that it transforms lives, transforms communities and sectors, transforms South Africa as a nation and a society, transforms our continent, and makes a significant contribution to changing the world. I thank everyone who has made it possible for me to be the first African and 13th Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria. Many people have contributed to such an achievement. No one is an, an island and no one is an individual. Especially in our continent, everybody is a child, is a child in a village and everybody in the village is a parent, a brother, a sister, a father to that child. I thank my late father, William Kope, who, by the way, was a principal for the rest of his life. I don't know whether to follow his line. My mother, uh, uh, my father who's late, my mother and my first teacher. My mother taught me in grade one and grade two. <laughs> if I might say so, if it was not for my mother's good teaching, I would not be standing here today as the vice chancellor. <laughs> And my mother was a good teacher, I want to repeat that. <laughs> my teachers and lecturers who taught me all the way to the PhD, close family and friends across the globe, to my children, Tino, Uyapo, and Marang, through education, may you find your mission in life. Thank you to the UP community for the warm welcome and support. Together, let us decisively transform South Africa and Africa's futures.
I will now request the representatives of their respective stakeholder groups to convey congratulations to the Vice Chancellor and Principal in the order in which their names appear in the program. I'll first like to call upon the Chairperson of the Student Committee, Mr. David Kabor, to convey the message to the Vice Chancellor and Principal on behalf of the students. Mr. Chancellor, to the executives of the various universities represented today, to the members of the SRC, to all of the students that are present here, today we are standing on a ship that is about to depart for waters that shine with the spark of excitement. You see, when I speak about a ship, I do not speak about the ship. <laughs> but I speak about a voyage that we are about to partake in. And this is a five-year voyage. We gather today in this place to witness a new horizon. We gather on a ship with a new captain who is at the helm. We gather here with a certain feeling that is in the air. And this feeling is a feeling of expectation and of jubilation. It is a feeling of interest and intrigue. It is a feeling of delight. You see, the reason why we are feeling delight is because we gather for a more massive, momentously moving, magnanimously mesmerizing moment. Yes. This is a voyage that is history in the making for the University of Pretoria. As a student in the University of Pretoria, I am proud to be a part of this occasion because you see the winds that blow on these sails, these are winds that blow with the echo of the voices of the dreams and of the knowledge of every single student at the University of Pretoria, the most important stakeholder. We are focused and we are fiery. We are driven and diligent. We are critical and connected. We are students in the best university in the country. And you see, to steer a ship in the opposite direction of the wind would not be an easy task. And that is why, at the helm of the ship, you are going to need an individual who is for the students. And this is why we realize as students that we have a lot to deal with. As we look at this new horizon, we see that it is riddled with landmines. There are sharp rocks and very many obstacles to overcome. When we look at this voyage, our destination is academic success. And we look out and we smell the seriously salty sea air, but in it we feel the crisp and cool winds of change that are blowing in our direction. And so a lot of these waters are very much uncharted but we are, we are excited to explore them together. And that is why today, it is with great joy and a united voice that we say, on behalf of the student body, <laughs> that we are excited to mention that Professor Tawana Kupe is a man who is for the students. One thing you will repeatedly hear any time he is given the opportunity to speak is that at the students within the University of Pretoria, we are a community. And you see, in a community, we look out for one another. We are interconnected with issues that are interrelated. 
We are a community that is united in the belief that we are in this together. And so I asked Professor Tawana Kupe, Professor, how did you feel when you found out that you are the Vice Chancellor of the University of Pretoria? And I could hear the smile through the phone. And he tells me, I felt delighted. And therefore, as we stand on the deck of the ship today, I share the feeling that so many of us have. I feel inspired to reach new heights. I feel motivated to forge a way forward. I feel with every fiber of my might that we are about to reach a brand new height. And I feel that the road ahead it is filled with a beautiful light. And that is why, as we have gathered here today, <laughs> my fellow compatriots, in the pursuit of educational enlightenment, today the feeling in the air is one of anticipation of your tenure as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. And that is why with great delight I stand before you on behalf of the student body to say, Professor Tawana Kupe, we welcome you as our Vice Chancellor and our Principal at the University of Pretoria. I will now call upon Professor Vasuredi to convey the message to the Vice Chancellor and Principal on behalf of the staff of the university. Thank you very much, Program Director. Professor Kupe, it is a humbling honor to share a message on behalf of all the staff of the University of Pretoria. Our 111-year-old journey continues today as UP begins a new chapter in its leadership with you at the helm. I have no doubt that you recognize that if we do not understand our history and if we do not understand the relevance of our context, we risk repeating the failures of our past. As our country's and institutional history shows, Change is both necessary and inevitable. It is how we adapt, mediate, and engage such change that matters in a way that recognizes, as you've said, our local, our continental, and our indeed global relations. Prof, you're aware that universities were originally a steering mechanism of an earlier social formation, socializing its elites and functioning as one of the bearers of its knowledge and high culture. Thankfully, we are moving away from that limiting paradigm. Universities are now also increasingly today about the creation of a future for us all. Universities have a very important and ambitious aim, a kind of social compact, as if you've alluded, directed towards producing scholars and graduates who really make a difference both personally and professionally to compete in a changing, a troubled and a messy world. We are, and indeed, an intellectual ground for shaping the future leaders of tomorrow, not for their first job, but certainly for their entire career trajectory. Beyond simply being a training space for graduates, the university is fundamentally a space for the pursuit of knowledge and ideas. Universities are also places for bringing about democracy and social justice for technological advancements and experimentation, 
for finding solutions to inequalities in its broadest manifestation, a space for real, meaningful, and tangible partners, a hub, as you've alluded, for creativity, critique, including also dissent. Quality education must therefore counter the risks of education backwardness for the economic competitiveness within which we find ourselves. Of course, managing the balance between these comp comp competing imperatives is then the challenge confronting not just you as the Vice Chancellor and Principal, but each one of us. It is our collective responsibility. Together, we must be responsive to the diverse and multiple needs of the economy and society by not shying away from addressing the historical disparities induced by the divisive legacies we have inherited. Like you, we believe in real partnerships that should encompass the very core activities of the university and direct towards building of its peoples, improving institutional capacity, changing our cultures to becoming facilitative and enabling while we remain intellectual, efficient, organized, creative, inquisitive, innovative, and interactive, striking a balance between national responsiveness and global competitiveness, between demographic representativity and cosmopolitanism goes to the heart of the academy. These, I'm sure, Prof, you will agree, are non-negotiable. We should nurture the values that are powerful too. We must encourage respect, dignity, collegiality, while also simultaneously being decisive and reflective. We must build trust, listen, inspire, care, and support, even in the midst of dissent and the spirit of academic freedom. The values we strive towards and espouse should be holistic, integrity, impartiality, excellence, community, openness, civility, freedom, and responsibility, for example, are not unique to a university. These values come to us from our parents, from our ancestors, our teachers, and the ordinary people who leave imprints on our lives. Prof. Coupe, I recall Frank Rhodes, who argues in the creation of the future, the role of the American university, that the university can be a dinosaur. It is huge, it is lumbering, it is endearing in its own way, yet in several ways, it seems unsuited to today's world. Is it a thing of the past, unnecessary in an age of the internet and online learning? Like Rhodes, I believe the university is an imperfect institution, but it is also an irreplaceable resource. The university is our national and international treasure, and so it must be preserved, not simply because of nostalgia, but because we are being deliberative to advance the knowledge domain through renewal and change. After all, the university in its founding definition is a community of teachers and scholars, and it is a space made for learning. This is not simply the task for students, but for each and every one of us who are members of this community. A meta-text of your address, Prof. Cooper, is precisely about this. One is the capacity to continue to educate oneself over a lifetime, and the other is the opportunity to get started if we have not already started. As we commemorate Human Rights Month, today is also a reminder of the commitment of UP to upholding a culture of human rights, tolerance, and democracy. Your vision statement and interventions have repeatedly made explicit an openness to difference and inclusion. This is a firm and unambiguous posture which we must embrace. An open university is also what we continuously aspire to, especially as we approach the national elections on the 8th of May. As all of us can presently attest, the road ahead, Vice Chancellor, is not going to be uniformly smooth. In fact, we should not expect it to be. There will be potholes, crevices, roadblocks, load shedding, <laughs> literally and metaphorically. Yes, Prof, we will need together to steer the institution by bringing back the electricity and the light, 
to ensure that the academic project and vision you have envisioned so crisply is carried through amidst obstacle courses. And I believe it will be a progressive journey, a roadmap towards increased inclusion, intellectual diversity, access, equality, and representativity. It will no doubt be a journey replete with its own challenges. But more importantly, it will be one of exciting opportunities, innovative ideas, tangible achievements, and meaningful change. Prof, we, the academics, and the support staff, the workers, join you in embracing that change. So, as you begin this new chapter at our remarkable institution, we recognize that the university is always under construction. It's work in progress. It's unfinished business. Let us remind ourselves that the University of Pretoria, like the capital city and the country in which it is based, is a place of contested ideas, vigorous debate, and true learning. We look forward to working together with you to reshape, indeed, to reimagine the future of UP in distinctive and positive ways. Now, I, I understand that some might be skeptical with what I have proposed. Skepticism is an attribute of the academy, but skepticism should not shroud us from being aspirational. I'm of the view that we should put our full support behind you, above as you've inclined, uh, as you have alluded to, above narrow interests. As school scholars, as teachers, and the broader community of colleagues at this fine university, we admire your ingenuity, your encompassing spirit, your internationalist perspective, your vitality, your energy, your creativity, your sense of purpose, your principle of speaking truth to power, and for taking this institution to even greater heights. We are confident that you will bring a leadership style that is inspirational and unique. We know that you're not an individual who simply relies on briefings, but rather someone who directly engages the people that matter. The unfinished narrative of UP, Professor Cooper, is yet to be written. Ours is a story yet to be told, and we, your colleagues, look forward to work with you to remodel, to recreate, and to rewrite that next chapter together. What you will instill in us and what we, the university community, will instill in you will be a powerful combined force for our future identity. Prof. Cooper, we look forward to this exciting journey with you. Thank you. I'll call upon the Acting Director of Human Resources, Ms. Patience Mushunga, to read the congratulatory message on behalf of UP affiliated unions. Good afternoon. I was requested by our three unions uh, to convey a message of congratulations and a warm welcome to Professor Kupe. The message from uh, Mr. Joseph Makasa, who is the UP branch chairperson of the National Education, Health and Allied Workers Union, which is known popularly as Nehau on campus. It reads as follows. Revolutionary greetings to colleagues, students, and guests. <laughs> I'm sure you all expected the revolutionary part of it. <laughs> Nehau at the University of Pretoria branch congratulates Professor Tawana Kupe on his appointment as the Vice Chancellor of this beautiful institution. We look forward to working jointly with the Vice Chancellor to transform the university and to reposition it as an employer of choice. We encourage the Vice Chancellor and the leadership team of the university in all their deliberations to always keep in mind the economic struggles of the workers that, that they face each day. And with those few words, we say, you are welcome, you must feel at home. Then the message from the chairperson of the University of Pretoria Workers' Union, which is popularly known as UVO, Mr. Chris Hartings, reads thus. Dear Professor Kupe, it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the members of UVO, 
Uvo represents employees of, of all categories at the University of Pretoria. We expect you to carry UP to new heights as a preferred employer to all UP employees, both current and future. Uvo pledges to support you and our university within the bounds of our role to strengthen the university's reputation as a world-class institution and a preferred place of teaching and learning. Welcome, Prof. Kupe. And then our new baby on campus um, is an, an organization called the Academic and Professional Staff Association, APSA. And its chairperson, Mr. Eugene Maluleke, has said the following. APSA would like to welcome Professor Kupe warmly as our new vice chancellor here at the University of Pretoria. We will be delivering a membership form to your office to join APSA. <laughs> We do wish you great success in your new role. Warm regards, <laughs> Absa. I will now call upon Dr. Hirner Costa, the chairperson of Tax Alumna, and on behalf of Tax Club 60 Plus as well as Ms. Bridget Sitlapelo, Chairperson of Pahama Alumni Club, to convey their messages to the Vice Chancellor and Principal on behalf of the alumni of the university. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the more than 300,000 uh, UP alumni, it is an honor and privilege to, uh, for me to first welcome all the distinguished guests at, at this very historic event where the University of Pretoria is inaugurating its first black African vice chancellor and principal in over 100 years. While I cannot mention each one by name, these guests are all current and former chancellors, vice chancellors, principals, chairs of councils, deputy vice cha chancellors, vice principals, and other members of executives, deans, deputy deans, heads of departments, professors, and associate professors. Our student representative council, members of staff, both academic and from support services, donors, supporters, alumni, and friends. Finally, finally, also the members from the media. However, most important today, I want to express my sincere congrat congratulations to you, Professor Tawana Kupi, on your appointment as the new Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, and wish you well and success in your new role. Having listened to the introduction of the Chair of Council and looking at your past experience, similar to the University Council's decision, I believe, that you come to this position with more than sufficient experience at various level to have been the appropriate candidate to lead the university with its challenging environment into the future. I believe you have a definite purpose and also listening to you, you certainly do, for this university. And as Dennis Waitley, an American motivational speaker, writer and consultant who has been recognized as the best-selling author of the audio series, The Psychology of Winning, indicated, winners are people with a definite purpose in life. Therefore, I'm sure I talk on behalf of most, if not all, university alumni, that we support the University Council's decision to have you take over the reins at this proud institution and at such a key moment in South Africa. Professor Kupe, when you were appointed, you made the following very important statement of intent in which you said, Universities have a responsibility to develop educated, well-informed, and professionally skilled people who can address local and global challenges and contribute towards creating successful and thriving societies. You further said to be able to play these critical, important roles, universities must enjoy academic freedom and institutional autonomy, allow for freedom of inquiry and be transparent, accountable, and ethical in their practices in all respects. I cannot agree with you more, but one also has to be realistic that we live in a country and era with a huge diversity of expectations, combined with a diversity and ever-changing economic and social climate 
that results in many challenges often beyond our control. At the same time, you also indicated, and I quote, I look forward to collaborating with my colleagues as we continue to create a diverse and inclusive university community, producing well-educated, well-trained graduates who make a contribution to economic and social development and help create the society envisaged in our constitution. Your appointment certainly can be regarded as important in the journey of transforming the University of Pretoria to be sufficiently inclusive, responsive to the socio-economic challenges that beset South Africa, and to play a significant role in our country's developmental agenda. Therefore, we are looking forward for you to continue the great strides made not only in Professor De La Rey's tenure, but also before that, in positioning the University of Pretoria as an institution that is a welcoming home to some of the greatest minds across South Africa, Africa and well beyond. You truly stand on the shoulders of these giants, but we are sure you have the right criteria to follow in the footsteps of these extraordinary people. We are proud as University of Alumni that our alma mater is the largest contact university in South Africa, is one of the top producers of PhDs in the country, and is regarded as a national and international leader in research, with over 30 of our researchers counted among the top 1% of scientists globally. The university's research and education certainly makes a decisive difference to South Africa and Africa's future. Hopefully, we as alumni that carry the university at heart can continue to exchange ideas and collaborate closely with you and your senior management in an official and structured manner, manner like we've done with Professor De La Rey, to contribute to our shared goals of continuing the growth of this impact the university already had and at least maintain or even improve the university's position as one of the top 2% of universities in the world. In this collaboration between the university's alumni and the university, many new opportunities may exist for promoting the university and assisting it to achieve specific goals. And therefore, we feel that it, is, it will be important to continue to strategically utilize the different university alumni structures and interest groups to provide that support through official channels endorsed by senior management of the university. It would also be important to establish as soon as possible what the different roles of alumni experts could be to ensure successful collaboration, exchange of information, and coordination. To me, it has been a great honor and privilege to have served as chairman of the alumni board since 2014, where the board unfortunately had to face various challenges beyond its control which prevented it to function as well and contribute as much as it has done in the past to continuously present senior university management with comprehensive ideas and recommendations. It is important to reestablish the proper structure and constructive relationships between an all-inclusive university alumni board and the university. Exchange of experience will be very useful and interaction with regional and sub-regional alumni groups, as well as various interest groups, such as those representing professionals, sport, culture, etc., can provide important uh, opportunities to assist the university to, to excel on all levels of its various activities. Many university alumni are leaders in their fields, and I'm fully confident that their knowledge, experience, and expertise will provide important insights on further strengthening the activities of the university. Professor Kupi, once again, welcome aboard, and we wish you a very successful term as Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University and a special and highly memorable experience. Finally, in your endeavors, remember this quote from Dennis Waitley, no man or woman is an island. To exist just for yourself is meaningless. You can achieve the most satisfaction when you feel related to some greater purpose in life, something greater than yourself. We know you have a lot of dreams for the university. That's good, as you need dreams to ensure that you're going to make a dream come true. Therefore, if the alumni and its board can play a part in supporting you and the university to achieve the most satisfaction and make your dreams for the university come true, we will be delighted to do that. Thank you. I just have a short message as well from the TIX alumni 
club 60 plus unfortunately i'm not part of them yet but they did send it to me uh, sincere congratulations on your inauguration as vice chancellor and principal of the university of pretoria this is well deserved as your high reputation as an academic and a person precedes you you are both a scholar and a leader of stature on behalf of the Tux Alumni Club 60 Plus, our very enthusiastic and sincere congratulations on only the 13th appointment in this elevated position in the history of the University of Pretoria. We, the Tux Alumni Club 60 Plus, are looking forward to you carrying on our tradition of greatness, and we know that our alma mater is in good hands. We support your vision to lead the university to even more successful and challenging horizons. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to the UP leadership for giving us this platform to welcome our VC and principal, Professor Tawana Kube. On behalf of the UP uh, Alumni Association called Pahama, meaning rise, would like to wish Professor Tawana Kube a convivial welcome. Pahama is a registered interest group and is part of um, the structures of the alumni of this institution. To say we are thrilled to have you, Prof, at the university is an understatement. We received this news with an air of great excitement and enthusiasm. Congratulations on your appointment, and thank you for the enthusiasm with which you embraced the invitation to become our vice chancellor and principal. Your appointment engraves a declaration of our full support. True to our creed, each one help one. Universities are unique institutions. They are places of transformation. They are places where lives are changed, where knowledge is acquired, where the future is forged. Universities are also places that are constantly being reshaped. Today we celebrate one remarkable chapter in our university's history and opening a new one. That new chapter begins today on this day with this inauguration of our first black vice chancellor and principal, who is a seasoned academic and administrator with impeccable credentials. We believe that while significant and notable strides have been made by Professor Cheryl Dillaray, as well as those who came before her to transform this university, there is still great urgency to ensure that the grounds that many of us walked on many years ago become spaces of inclusiveness and reflect what a truly African university should be. As graduates have grown up and new alumni has emerged, the market has naturally evolved. There is now a whole new generation of alumni to consider and once worked well, but may now not. In short, it means the tactics may need updating and modifying for the new audience. We were once students in this institution who entered this university from a position of extreme inequality in terms of schooling, race, class, financial, and other factors. We entered in this institution from poor and disadvantaged backgrounds without cultural capital deemed necessary for success. But after years of traveling, through tre treacherous terrains with long winding roads, steep slopes with each other by the sides, we finally reached our destination. A great writer, a South African feminist, who is also a UP alumni, Phyllis Ndandala, wrote an essay named The Windows of the Reserves. Her words in that essay are true and still relevant to us as the UP alumni, because today many in the academic world still face life alone. And this is why we are here, to walk that journey with them. Universities also need to think of graduates' long-term careers. The implications of the higher education sector are very clear. Create graduates who are more agile, with a solid understanding of how the workplace works and can see their skills fitting into it. The way employability is currently measured puts too much emphasis 
on universities' ability to get graduates into employment that matches their degree dis disciplines, rather than on their readiness for a career. As Pahama, we think that a better interpretation of graduate career path and the sharing of knowledge between universities and business would leave the higher education sector better placed to tackle the issues at hand. While in celebration of the great strides that the university has achieved to date, we are cognizant of the work that lies ahead. The mammoth task of transforming the University of Pretoria into a true African university starts by creating an environment which is supportive to all the students as well as academic and support staff, where each and every one of them can live out their dreams with a proper and sufficient representation at all levels of governance of this institution. In conclusion, Professor Kupe, as Pahama UP Alumni Association, we share your passion for higher education and the value that it brings to the society and to the economy. We are aware of our role as the alumni, which is crucial for the development of this university. We recognize the traction in the transformation agenda, and we will lend a helping hand to ensure the achievement of this all-important task. As the University of Pretoria brand ambassadors, we look forward to the academic activism and boldness that will ensure that the UP continues to produce great academic and professional giants. We look forward to working closely with you in advancing and growing the University of Pretoria to be the cradle of future leaders of our country and our continent. We wish you all the best in this journey as you continue with the long tradition of eminent chancellors of this great university who between themselves have conferred millions of degrees to many of us since the beginning of this institution 111 years ago. God bless University of Pretoria. I thank you. I will now call upon Dr. Film Joacha, the Director General of the Department of Science and Technology, to convey a message to the Vice Chancellor and Principal on behalf of the Minister. Yes. Professor Wiseman Kutlu, Chancellor of the University, and Tom Futim Toba, the Chair of Council and other Council members academics, government leaders, business leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start by conveying the apologies of the Minister of Science and Technology, Minister Mamulugo Kubai Ngubane, who was obliged to change her schedule, but would have liked to be here. And as you can see, I'm not as beautiful as she is. We are all glad to see the appointment uh, of the Vice Chancellor of the Caliber of Pro Professor Kupe to this esteemed university. The Department of Science and Technology regards the University of Pretoria as a world-class academic institution that is actively supporting government in achieving its objective. Through the University Strategic Plan 2025, and in line with the government's National Development Plan, the University of Pretoria is pursuing research that helps South Africa to find its solution to complex socioeconomic challenges. Just one example of this university's research excellence is the work that it's doing in the forestry sector. UP hosts the Center of Excellence in Tree Health Biotechnology under the auspices of the Forestry and Agriculture Biotechnology Institute, FABI, as it is known, and working with the Agricultural Research Council and other universities carries out world-class leading research that contributes directly to the development needs and the global competitiveness of the forestry industry in South Africa. The Forest Molecular Genetics Program, which is also a joint venture with South African forestry industry partners and stakeholders as well, aimed at developing biotechnology applications for tree improvement on the genetic basis of tree growth, wood formation, defense against pests and pathogens, 
drought resistance and reduction of the harvest time to enhance industry competitiveness is beginning to bear fruit. We've asked the industry to share with us the benefits that they are getting out of this program and they will be giving us some numbers but they are already telling us that they are deriving excellent benefit from this partnership. The university's centers and programs, too many uh, to list here, support many government initiatives to make people's lives better, including efforts to embrace innovation and enhance the competitiveness and modernization of key sectors of the economy. So I was extremely delighted to hear Professor Coupe about the work that is being done in the engineering uh, section as well as in the mining because the two ministers from these two sectors have already asked us how can we modernize the mining sector and how can we in the transport sector begin to modernize our uh, transport sector. So we'll be knocking on your door in our efforts to ensure that the work that is being done in this university, of course with the other universities, begin to shape the government thinking in this regard. One important collaboration again just as an example between the University of Pretoria, Department of Science and Technology, the, Uni the University of Pretoria is hosting the Center of Excellence in Food Security with the University of Western Cape. The Center of Excellence in Food Security is a virtual organization that brings together the expertise of numerous South African and international institutions and over 100 researchers across various disciplines to conduct research build capacity and disseminate findings that will promote a sustainable food system in South Africa. The research is concerned with the scale, nature, causes and consequences of food insecurity in South Africa and elsewhere on the African continent. Last week we received a report on the climate change research uh, in South Africa and we were told that even though the global average temperature is to be kept at 1.5 degrees in sub-Saharan Africa, it will be double 1.5 degrees. So you can imagine what that means in sub-Saharan Africa, and unless we have research that thinks about how we're going to address this challenge, in fact, this comes at an opportune time if we just see the damage that has happened in the three countries north of our borders. We also acknowledge the role of the university in the training of postgraduate students. Over a 12-year period between 2002 and 2014, University of Pretoria has consistently had the highest number of students enrolled for master's degree in engineering. 19% of all master's engineering degrees uh, in South Africa. The skills they are building are vital for the economy and we've just concluded the study of the training of uh, uh, postgraduate students in engineering and is making some recommendations and again, Prof, we will be visiting your office so that we can look at how best we can move forward in this area. The world is changing more and more rapidly, and in spite of all progress made by humankind, we require ever newer approaches to solving problems. The new changes are driven by socioeconomic and geopolitical factors such as demographic shifts, climate change, urbanization, rising inequality and youth unemployment, the rise of China and India as economic powers and scientific and technological advances. Perhaps the most challenging of these is the fourth industrial revolution in which we find ourselves uh, where the lines between physical and digital spheres have become blurred. As a response to this rapidly changing world, I'm happy to announce that Cabinet recently approved a new white paper on science, technology, and innovation. This white paper seeks to use science, technology, and innovation to accelerate inclusive economic growth, make the economy more competitive, and improve people's lives uh, in South Africa. At a more practical level, however, it aims to help South Africa benefit from the global developments that I've referred to, in particular, the rapid technological advancement and geological and demographic shifts as well as respond to the threats associated with some of these. In a nutshell, the White Paper seeks to steer South Africa towards sustainable growth and development in a world that is forever changing. We see the University of Pretoria as an important part of realizing 
the goals of the white paper through research and human capital development. Given its record of producing highly skilled graduates and postgraduates, we see University of Pretoria helping us respond to a nationwide challenge like the low numbers of university staff in South Africa that have PhDs. We applaud the 56%, but we think we need to all move a little bit higher. Limited supervisory capacity, a lack of critical mass in some of engineering fields, and low participation rates of women in postgraduate engineering studies. In a world where ideas and technologies evolve rapidly and the challenges we face are multifaceted and transnational, and Africa needs a new generation of original thinkers and innovators with international perspectives, yet with a scholarly vision and voice that is rooted in Africa. One of the objectives of this new white paper that I've referred to is an integrated African science, technology, and innovation agenda. We see the University of Pretoria's new Future Africa campus that has been mentioned a number of times that will be launched next week on Friday as a critical enabler that will create a conducive environment for Africa's leading scientists and scholars, including those in the diaspora, to come together and produce transdisciplinary research to address the grand challenges that Africa face and of course the world. Critically, the campus will assist uh, with fostering pan-African uh, networks, friendships, and partnerships. Under Professor Cooper's leadership, I have no doubt that the future Africa campus will become a beacon of scientific excellence on our continent and part of the vanguard of Africa's achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, producing African solutions for African and global challenges. In conclusion, as stated earlier, if we as a country and continent are to respond creatively and effectively to a rapidly changing world, we will need partners like the University of Pretoria to continue providing leadership by producing socially relevant research on a sustainable basis. We have no doubt that under its new Vice Chancellor and Principal, the University of Pretoria will continue to produce relevant world-class and innovative research. So on behalf of the Minister of Science and Technology, I would like to convey our hearty congratulations to Professor Tawana Kupe. We wish you well in your new role and look forward to strengthening our relationship with the University of Pretoria. Thank you for your attention. Well, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the new Vice Chancellor. The applause are for the new Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, Professor Kupe. Congratulations. We are really exceedingly pleased that you have joined the community of the University of Pretoria. I think all the witnesses here today are here to wish you the very best, and really we are very grateful that your day has gone the way that it has gone. It is now my pleasure on your behalf to, as the new Vice Chancellor and Principal, to thank all the speakers for their kind words and congratulations this afternoon. And uh, I'm sure you would say more, but uh, I'm just saying how grateful we are we're very pleased that you have the support of the whole university community and that we have a representative of our democratic government confirming that support and best wishes. Everything of the best. I am convinced that, uh, Professor, you will take your, these messages to heart and that you will uphold the values and objectives of the University of Pretoria, lead the university well, in its response to the challenges facing our country, and in all things promote the welfare of the University of Pretoria. It has been a long afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for your attendance, but now it's my pleasure to say we have now come to the end of the formal proceedings. Before we close, I again wish to invite you to, to the reception downstairs directly below this auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen,
you are now requested to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing until the assembly has been dissolved and the academic profession has left the auditorium. with me, I hereby dissolve this congregation of the University of Pretoria. Thank you very much.